are listening to the Metal Summit, your source for all things rock and roll. Hello everybody, this is another episode, episode number 12 of the Metal Summit. How are you guys? Yeah. Doing good, doing great, Max. How are you, brother? Good. Today we have uh, an awesome musician, man, PJ Farley. How you doing, PJ? I'm um, well. Thanks for having me. Oh man, this is amazing. Thank you so much. How are you guys doing, the rest of the crew? Excited to ask questions? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. All right. So, who wants to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, an introduction, you know, like a, some, a short brief introduction for PJ? Steve, you want to do it? Sure. So, since I'm the New Jersey native, and PJ's a New Jersey native, uh, PJ has paid his dues from all the bands. I've, I've seen PJ in pretty much every band except one, and that would be playing with Eric Martin, because... I was supposed to see you June 6th for the uh, winery show because I was supposed to host it. And unfortunately, that got postponed to, I think, August 29th. End of August, yeah. Yeah. So, But I've seen him in, every, let's call it what it is, your claim to fame is Trickster. Right? That's what really put you on the map. Sure did. Uh, got you several accolades, a couple platinum albums, and a couple... Uh, a lot of airplay on MTV when MTV existed. Yeah. Is it now? It's fucking right. nothing. Um, it's just reality TV. They should change the letter to R TV. <laughs> reality TV, personally. Okay. It sucks. You know? Um, but you could probably be making a shit ton of money doing the musical beds for all those horrible shows, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but, you know, but then I've seen you in Raw, and then I've seen you in Sugar Belly. Um, so yeah, so I've seen like pretty much every inkling of band except the Eric Martin band with you, Steve, and who's playing drums? Joey Casada. That's right, Joey Casada. Yo, two and Kiss Nation, and you know, yeah. ground. <laughs> yeah, he's been around too. It's great to see. It, it, it's like a super group without you know being publicized as a super group, in my opinion. And it's you guys a, should be. It's a modest supergroup. Yeah, very, very modest. You know? So, like I said, uh, and I saw Trickster at several clubs before they broke out and toured with Kiss. There was very popular nightclubs in New Jersey called the Birchill Nightclub. There was Mothers. There's Dingo, uh, Dingbats. And I can go on, but it's not about me talking. Yeah. This whole so. No, that's awesome. So, yeah. So that's a great, you know, brief introduction to, to PJ. And PJ, now how you doing, bro? Not having, you know, say that. How you doing? I'm good. I'm as good as uh, as good as can be. Yeah. How's the quarantine treating you? It's been really good, actually. I've been, you know, very productive and, you know, doing all the stuff that I always said I was going to do, mm -hmm. um, and always found something else to do instead. Okay. Uh, but more good. importantly, just um, a little bit more focused on some things musically and um, just, you know, enjoying it, enjoying time with the family and yeah. um, staying home. To cool. Prefer, you know. cool. Bobby, you want to start with a question? Yeah, I got a couple things. So, uh, one, I'm a guitar player who loves playing bass. You're a bass player who plays amazing guitar and sings. Uh, how'd you do the transition? 
Um, I don't really think I've completed that yet. <laughs> I, uh, I've always just kind of juggled everything. I'm like, I'm a, like a jack of all trades, master of none. So like I started out playing drums. That was my first love. And I always had a guitar in the house. Um, but when I switched to bass, you know, I would always pick up the guitar. Um, and I don't know, I never, I'm definitely not an amazing guitar player at all. Uh, I can play what I hear, but you know, I don't, you know, I'm not going to get in a room and everybody can just start, you know, oh, well, solos and stuff like that. But I mean, I use it to, you know, write songs and I can, you know, I know a handful of chords, most of the notes. And the um, chords you use, your album's amazing, which is, you know, you. I, I, that's a great album. Definitely. I mean, Definitely. Thank you. Well, I, I can get the parts that I hear in my head on the guitar. So that's good enough for me. You know, I don't need to shred or do anything like that but well, that's what I, you have steve for, songs call for. <laughs> yeah exactly a real guitar player awesome so uh jay yes sir i'm trying to fix the the screens here a little bit so you know it's not that uh but uh yeah man go for it go for your questions go for your comments say hello to our guest you know go for it absolutely man we got pj <laughs> Park here no it's great dude but um so, you know, piggybacking a little bit to start off off the guys and um, a little bit is, you know, we touched about, you know, dealing with just, you know, everybody having to do the quarantine thing and stuff. But let's talk a little bit about quarantine with a K and how that yes. came with you and the guys. Uh, quarantine with a K, yeah. Go figure. Um, <laughs> well, Chris Jericho just called me one day and he's like, hey, man, you like 80s Kiss? I'm like, sure. Why? He's like, well, because... My buddy Ken Sletcher, who uh, plays drums for Luke Bryan, he's like, and Joe McGinnis from the classic 78. You guys are familiar with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, he's like, and myself, we're, we're doing two Kiss cover songs and we need a bass player. I'm like, I'm down. And he told me which ones we were doing. I was like, holy oh. shit. Uh, cool. You know, totally not what anyone else would you know, expect. So I thought that was cool right off the bat. And then, um, you know, Jericho is, he does nothing half-assed. You know, you see all these people online doing their videos, posting them on Instagram, it's fun, it's great. He took it and he's like, all right, we're doing this, merch, spin magazine. We got, you know, Saturday Night Special, you know, 100,000 people watching. I mean, full court press. It's like, you know. So it's a it's it's got you know we got Bruce Kulick involved playing yeah, with yeah. us. It's really kind of exploded in the short period of time, and um, it's coming out really cool. And it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah, I ordered my shirt today from you guys off the uh, site. You guys had it in the comment box. The shirt looks great. Yeah, it's cool, right? Yeah, it's awesome. So how how can I get that shirt? Do you do you remember the website or the the place to go and buy it online? If you go to what is it on uh, your uh, it's quarantine? On the, uh, quarantine quarantine underscore official on Instagram. Cool. And All right. Yeah. So everybody go to Instagram and get one of those T-shirts. Uh, how how uh, how do you start with the um, are you a Kiss fan? When did you start? Below, with? below the below the collar .com. Okay. Yeah. Am I a Kiss fan? Yep. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> How do you start? Because I think we're all Kiss fans here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Kiss is yeah. Oh, yeah. How was it the first tune that got you hooked with the band? That I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> I remember getting all the records and really by the time. By the time Dress to Kill came out, I was, you know, hook, line, and sinker. And then, you know, all I think in, in the 80s, at first, I got, see, the 80s wasn't so much the music. It was sometimes it was hard to digest watching Gene be comfortable. So it's visually, it threw me off a little bit. So I stepped back a little bit, you know. Although it still is to the records, but um, uh, I wasn't as obsessed. But then, looking back, I mean, and there's so much cool stuff. And I said this on 
Chris's show on Saturday. So uh, as far as the 80s stuff is concerned, a lot of the singles weren't really like my favorite stuff. I mean, the Tears Are Falling, yes, um, Forever, um, you know, some of, but like like some of the other singles, uh, All Night and Crazy Nights, and you know, it's the deeper cuts that I liked more than the singles that they were going for. Um, really heavy stuff, actually. Cool. Like no, no, no. Some people don't even know. First of all, Kiss song, Kiss fans don't like that song. I've wow, learned. I love that. So many people when they find out what we're doing that song, they're like, "Oh, why?" Are you guys no, it's right. No, no, no. It's right. And, but now when people hear it, they're like, "Wait a minute, that's that's Kiss." Like they hear our version of it, put a little spin on it, you know, brought it up to speed, brought it up to speed a little bit, and uh, kind of gave it a new life. Yeah. Well, that's something, PJ, that I always thought was really cool that that was what you guys were focusing on when it comes to Kiss. Because, I mean, I love the 70s Kiss. We all love the 70s Kiss. But I I specialize and actually prefer that 80s kind of sludgier, heavier, sleazier type style out of the makeup that they were doing. It was, you know, just kind of interesting with that, you know, kind of stuff, even without having the original lineup. I just really dug what they were doing you know, in the 80s and stuff like that. And I definitely know what you mean about, like, the deeper cuts because some of those, like, just, you know, grindier, you know, crazier songs are very cool that you're right, have that reaction of, wait, that was yeah, this? Well, once Eric Carr got in the band, man, I mean, shit got serious. <laughs> yep. Cool. Angel. Yeah, um, next week, uh, it's the, the 30th anniversary of the release of the debut album, um, what are some of your memories of making that that first record? Um, well, I mean, it was the whole time was just you know I was such a kid I was a kid we were all kids and I just the level of excitement going into it and um, we we just kind of had this bubble around us like we were just so cocky and young and like driven like we went into that like confident and just kind of like this is where we're supposed to be this is what we're supposed to be doing and this is going to come out it's going to kick ass we're going to fucking take over the world and you know <laughs> it was just a, a magical time and you know for me for that to happen at the age i was at was also magical because it was like I didn't have any bills. I didn't have any commitments. I didn't have, a, I didn't have shit to do. And anything I was doing, I was doing with my friends. So that was probably the greatest part about it. It wasn't like I was an older cat who found this band and, you know, yeah, man, the band's great and everything. This one guy's a dick, but, you know, I'll deal with it. And the other guy's girlfriend's a bitch, whatever. It's like none of that. It was just like, these are my guys I'm hanging out with anyway. So... Hey, let's go. Let's go tour the world. Yeah. Take records and tour the world. Steve, <laughs> sir, it's your turn. Okay. Well, here's the question: How was the transition from playing a club such as like the Birchill, and then the album gets released? Because your album, the first album of Trickster, uh, as most people know, came out. Like Angel said, 30 years ago, we were on the cusp of grunge just taking part. And then you guys come out with Firehouse and Slaughter and all the other bands. Do you, I don't consider you guys a hair band, even though you guys had long hair and you guys are a hard rock band. But how is the transition from going from the club to then being support for Kiss? Yeah. Surprisingly easy, <laughs> like going back to us being cocky and driven. We were just like, we were like, right, get these fucking clubs out of here, you know? Come on, bring on the arenas. Let's go. Let's do this. And so it was, it was fairly easy to be honest with you. I mean, you know, just so um, ready to do that. Wanted it so bad, and uh, you know, and ironic. The ironic thing is. When we were doing arena tours on days off, we would fill those days off with club shows. And then we were like, oh, these club shows are awesome. Mm -hmm. 
awesome <laughs> because I mean they're just packed and you're just feeling the energy and you know you can see the people you can feel the heat coming off of them and they're, it's electric in the room you know arenas people are like oh how do you play to all those people it's like it's ironic because you see an ocean of people and don't get me wrong we've been in the arenas when it's like general admission and they're going crazy that those are good nights but they're not all like that even though you're playing in an arena and there's a lot of people there you know especially as an opening act some of them you know a lot of them sitting down filing in and it's you know it's not ideal in that, in that sense where it's like you know all right i'm playing this arena you're not getting that energy that you do in a packed club so i ironically once we got to the big stage we were looking forward to the club shows in between on the days off nice yeah for those who don't i, I mean i i, I wasn't um I, I didn't follow as I wanted to. You know, I'm from Argentina, so probably I didn't get, when growing up, I didn't get the information from Trickster as, you know, I wanted to, you know, like back in the 90s, 80s, you know, uh, no internet, it was more difficult to get, you know, info. I mean, MTV was all we had or, you know, we used to get every Sunday in a park and we used to trade records or get magazines, you know, from uh, France, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, how how's how how was to you know uh if i'm talking about trickster how was you know in in to be on the top you know like like, like you guys you know all good looking kids you know probably all the girls wanted to be with you so how was uh you know that uh transition from being probably on the top and then you know to be uh you know like a regular musician you know what i'm saying uh it, it, you know, there's a feeling when sometimes, you know, like, I don't know, um, these guys, uh, new kids on the block, you know, that they, they at some point, they, they grow up and they are men, right? Uh, how, how, how's the, that transition? I'm sorry if I didn't ask the, the question correctly, but I don't know if I... If I, I know, you're gonna, like, how is it basically going from riding high to descending? <laughs> Just to be, you know, like when you come, when you go from a teenager, you know, like, and you are in that environment of teenagers, all the girls, you know, screaming, right. to be a man, you know, and go as a musician mode, you know, like now you 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 grow up, you're mature, you know, that that's my question. How, how, how's right. that transition? Um, yeah, I mean, I I know where you, where you're going with that. I mean, it again, it, we were in our in our prime. It's such a good age for us that when things started kind of calming down for us, you know, we were still at a good age, you know, and, and young enough to where it wasn't like we hit at 35 and then, you know, at 42, we come down, we're like, you know, all the drug <laughs> problems, like, all right, you know, what now? You know, we were lucky enough to, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to be at a husband at 21. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> still, I still have my life ahead of me, you know, and oh, so yeah. much that's why I've, you know, you roll off a list of bands that I've played with, you know, and it keeps growing. But um, it, it was kind of a blessing. And uh, but it was, again, you know, as cocky as we were and as excited as we were, we always had a in the back of our mind, like, hey, it goes like that, disappears like that. And. You know, there's a trap door in Cloud Nine, so you know, don't get too cocky. Um, we were cocky by nature, not by status. Um, anyway, so we always joked and had a had a good head on our shoulders about you know we're just happy to be here, you know, and very humble. Mm -hmm. So when the inevitable time came where it was like time to settle down and come back to kind of real life, you know, it was an easy transition. Cool. Cool. Thank you for answering that. Man. Yeah. No so, PJ, um, you've been in the business long enough. I, I've seen you guys when you played Trenton War Memorial and everything back then, Firehouse and God, the early days. And uh, I think I forget who was doing the radio show. You guys did one. You've seen a lot of bands come up, but then you, I, I know, you know, with Steve and everybody, uh, the ones that crashed. You know the uh, Jamie Lanes and this and that. How does that affect you? Um, you know, I mean, it's 
being in this business, you know, we lose a lot of people. And I mean, you know, Janie, that one, that one was, you know, stung quite a bit because he was, you know, one of our brothers for sure. I mean, we spent a lot of time on the road with those guys and it was different than with any other band. Like we were just from day one, that was a, a tour that made immediate friends like on a, on a real organic level. Um, so he was, you know, instantly a brother. So that was, you know, that was a tough one to take for us. I mean, obviously so many other people that we know in the business that we, we were, um, friends with and, uh, that we've lost weren't as close as say Janie, but, um, you know, it's, they're all, they all stink, but, um, that one definitely stung. Yeah, I mean, you guys had such a great rapport and everything. That tour was incredible. Steve was talking about it. And, uh, you know, I, I I know it's the elephant in the room a lot of people don't want to address. But, you know, this business is uh, once the record companies and that went away, who had your back? Nobody. And really, I mean, I, I don't think anybody really felt the record companies had anyone's back at any point. <laughs> Never. I mean, our record came out. We had number one video on MTV. We're touring arenas. We go to a record store. Fucking record wasn't in the store. <laughs> We're like, are you kidding me right now? We have a number one video on MTV. Where's our record? Uh, it's it's like, you know, you, no one's ever felt supported by a record label. Um, truly. But, um, and then once those labels go away and your band gets dropped and whatnot, you know, no, there's there's there's, no, there's nobody there for me. Trust me, Got ain't nobody yeah. there. Yeah, it's show biz. Inches, do we have any messages from the fans? Uh, just messages. I'm from fans saying hello. Hello, uh, Matt, <laughs> Matt Porter, Kevin Butler, Detroit Stanley. Hi from Argentina. Awesome, Argentina. Uh, yeah. Beth uh, Amanda. <laughs> hi everyone. Kevin Butler from Hammerjacks. Yep. Nice. Hammerjacks. Yes. Thanks, everybody, for watching, man. This is amazing. Thank you, everybody. And uh, ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No questions so far. But, uh, yeah, the, we, I see we have a huge crew, man, following us. I, I mean, yes. the, 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 like, thank uh, you. We had, like, 50, like, 50 guys <laughs> watching, man. That's 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 very nice. Um, who's next? Jay. Yes, <laughs> One of the things that I thought would be funny, uh, by the way, I don't know if anybody else has seen this, but Angel went black on my end. Yeah, um, Angel, come back. Oh, but, uh, oh damn. One well, of the things that, that whole thing. Why don't you really black? come back? <laughs> okay, I'm coming back. <laughs> uh, DJ, one of the things I always thought was kind of cool when it came to like the trickster thing that you guys did that I, I got a, a kick out of was you guys put out a covers album in the mid-90s, but the thing I also really dug about it was not only your guys' song okay. selection, but you guys all moved around in instruments. And you had touched based earlier about how you played drums originally, but there was always guitars around it, and then you just kind of ended up settling primarily on bass but still being able to play all that stuff. Um, what was the idea of like you know having the band move around for these covers and playing different instruments? Because we did it all the time live. We, uh, we would always end the night at one of our shows um, – switching off i'd get behind the drums and steve would play bass and pete would play guitar we'd give gus the mic reluctantly and uh <laughs> but uh yeah and, and it just became something we always what i think where it really first started was we were on tour with warren and we were like almost five months in with that tour and that was like the last tour we did on the first record cycle so we were rounding 12 months solid at this point and we were just like all right, guys, we're going fucking nuts playing the same eight songs. Let's do it. We had a band meeting in Albuquerque, New Mexico, I think. He was like, what are we going to do every night to freshen up the set? So we'll do a cover song. We'll do something. We'll all switch instruments. Every night we'll do something different. Not a different song. Like we'll, we'll pick a handful of songs, and every night we will close our set doing something, else, whether it was Surrender from Cheap Trick that Gus sang or Enter Salmon where I sang – um, or uh, Dream Police, Steve sang, um, 
you know, whatever it was, but we, we just under cheap. We did that. Yep. And then that kind of worked its way over into the, uh, uh, undercovers record. And really that's where, and that was so much fun. And the crowd enjoyed that so much because they're like, all right, how often do you go to an arena show? Like one time we had our crew open for us. Like we like the Valley Hoop <laughs> Lights, big arena intro, please welcome from the backwoods of New Jersey, Crew Jam. And we had our crew play instruments and play thrash and everything. And then two seconds later, we come out and start beating the shit out of them, take our instruments back. And like, we just started fucking around. And it was like, that's awesome. Like you don't see that kind of shit yeah. when you go to big, big arena shows. And we thought that's something cool. And the crowd loved it. So we're like, let's, you know, and at that point we did it on the covers record. We were just like, let's just get some prop content out there. You know, Steve had just built a studio in his house. We're like, let's do something. We know we're not getting a record deal. So let's just do something. Have fun. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, so your screenshots went frozen. Anything you can do on your end? Maybe Mine? We can, yeah, we can reconnect if not, but uh, we it's all your screen is frozen for my screen's frozen, damn it. Uh, he, <laughs> I can I can see you moving fine, PJ. Oh really? Oh okay. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you then. <laughs> my bad. I can't so you can't <coughs> So can we can go guys. Alright, so um <laughs> Doing funny. I'm on the um, I'm on the live feed right now, Max, and everybody's moving right now. Okay, good. Oh, cool. Angel, why don't you jump in, brother? Yes, yeah, so we do have a question from Matt Porter. Uh, touring with Kiss, there must be some fun stories there. Uh, yeah, there are. I mean, there's. Um, I said this the other night. Somebody asked me while we were on Chris's show and my fun stories that I can tell on the air. Um, really, the, the cool, one of the coolest stories is really just kind of being out there every night. And Eric Singer was great. He would hang out in our dressing room every night and Gene would just come in and go, you know, Eric Singer needs to be your drummer and I get 20%. And uh, he, every night he would say that. And, um, and really... Gene hung out with us all the time. Like on days off, we if we went out to go shoot pool or something, Gene was there hanging out with us, and Eric would come hang out with us. And uh, Paul, not so much, um, not as much as we would have liked. But um, God, I mean, kiss story. Well, there's one time I posted on my Facebook not long ago. We Steve and I were doing demos, and we had a day off and we, we were at the gig and we were on, well, obviously we're on first. So our stuff goes on the semi first. And I realized that we're doing demos, demos. I'm like, shit, my bases are all on the semi already. And I was telling, uh, uh, Gene stepped up. He's like, you can take the Punisher. Oh. So he gave me his Punisher base to take wow. back with me and keep for the next two days. I recorded with it, got video of it, and I'm like, I'm like I don't think I'm going to give this thing back. And I probably shouldn't have because he's probably got 20 of them and he didn't need it. He probably would have never asked for it back. I was just talking to some guys about that last night. I'm like, shit, I should have kept that. But that, so that was pretty cool. Thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's killer, man. Hey, PJ, did you ever, um, did you ever get to meet Eric Carr at all? I'm trying to think that. I don't think I ever met him, no. Gotcha. I can recall. How was the crowd response during a, a KISS show? I know, look, you know, being a KISS fan, seeing them from the early stages, I've seen a lot of opening bands, but none of them left the mark. But And I know how crowds are there usually to see KISS. How did they respond to you? you guys um pretty good actually you know i mean i i was uh i don't remember ever really coming off stage going fuck that was work to me because we were just so like three ring circus up there we were going nuts I, we didn't care if anyone was in the building we were putting on a show we we weren't stopping taking notice of anyone sitting there like this really or anything i mean i'm sure there were but honestly when we toured the scorpions 
that was a little bit more work. I think maybe because we were newer, you know, I mean, with Kiss, you know, we, we had the success already under our belt. Um, we were a little bit more aware for people. You know, Scorpions was our, you know, mm. second arena tour on the first record. And, you know, we, we knew we had to mm-hmm. kick some ass to get them on our side, which we felt we did. What but album were they touring at the time? Scorpions. Crazy, crazy World. Ah, okay. So, sorry guys to interrupt again. So, we have people saying in the comments that, uh, yeah, PJ yeah. is frozen. So, PJ, can I call you back again? Maybe that, that yeah. will help? Yeah. Or if you, I don't know if I can hang up. Can you hang up? I'll call you back again. So, that, that okay. will solve the issue. Thank you, buddy. Call in five minutes. One second, actually. <laughs> Commercial okay. break. I'm calling back again. Somebody, somebody fill the air, please. <laughs> um, Reasons, just to let you know, it wasn't me. It wasn't me either. Okay. Good job. Okay, we call him back again. Uh, hopefully, he's gonna answer. <laughs> it's not gonna turn into a Lucather night. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I mean, we got him. That's the most important okay. thing. Is no, he's calling. It's all good. It's it's all everybody. I haven't seen it yet. What is that? What does that quarantine with a K shirt look like? Uh it's got a. Uh, what the heck's the symbol that's uh, uh oh the little kanji symbol yeah the kanji symbol and then it's all for it's really cool i mean it kind of reminded me of the gorilla's album cover really yeah but it it's it's oh, he's definitely cool it was you know worth ordering oh, so cool. pj can you move a little bit he's moving I know, I know, I know there he is yeah we got it fixed thank you pj sorry about that buddy Sorry, everybody, about the technical issue. Anyway, did. Yeah. Uh, all right, sorry. All right, so I have a question. There you go. There we go. So all the catalog from all the bands that you have recorded, played with. Do you have a favorite song? Hmm. That's a tough one. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Um, you know it's a it's a multi-tiered question because you know obviously there's stuff on my solo record that I'm I'm fond of Um, so I would have to categorize it between all the raw records the trickster records and um, I mean, okay. Yeah, I have to circle I, back. Uh, okay. So in your influences that I hear on your new, the latest and greatest solo album, are you a Butch Walker fan? Oh yeah, sure. Love Butch. Okay. Cause I don't know if you all have heard the latest single, but I hear a lot of Marvelous Three Butch Walker esque. And that's a hundred percent compliment, P. Yeah, well, I'm of, definitely influenced by that melodic, you know, rock. I mean, that's what I'm. You know, I get a lot of the '90s references and whatnot. But um, yeah, I mean, Butch is Butch is great. Awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah. I got I got hey, some stuff from the fans. Um, Bridget Sullivan, she's a major Trickster fan. She just wants to say thank you for your music. So oh, thank you, Bridget, for watching. Um, Bridget, Bridget Sullivan. Yep. Bridget. Good trickster fan. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in all this time. <laughs> and I have two people. They I kind of ask the same question about any chance of um, trickster getting back together and doing shows in the near future. But with the uh, original and members, right? Those questions are yep. You know, yeah, yeah I, I mean, that. hopefully. Last question from Jeff and. Hopefully, and Chris. Yep. I mean, Thank you. you know, I want to do it. Steve wants to do it. You know, this is what we do. We play music, you know, and Trickster yeah. is very much a huge part of our lives. And, you know, we've never wanted, you know, we took a hiatus for 13 years. Once we put it back together, you know, mm-hmm. we were ready to go and keep going. You know, it's uh something we've always wanted to do so i mean i'm hopeful you know there's a lot a lot of moving parts there too you know 
Um, so hopefully the stars align, but you know, I mean, again, Steve and I are out there and never stopped playing music, never wanted to stop playing music. We're out there. You know, we I, want to be. I have two questions regarding Steve. Uh, how's your relationship? I, you, 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 are you guys talking every day? Are you sharing, collaborating into, you know, music material? Um, yes, me, see, me and Steve are, you know, as tight as can be. We always have been. We've never missed a beat. We've never stopped working together um, in one way, shape, or form. We're always, he's just, you know, he's another limb and vice versa. Cool, cool. Well, and, was, yeah, sorry. you and Steve have been getting your Rubik's Cube on lately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yep. Yeah, we say hi to uh, Steve Brown also because you know he was one of our guests a few episodes ago, you know, a few shows ago. Very nice cool. guy, man. Um, cool. Angel, Angel, you want to yeah, say something? I got a question. Yes. Um, had um, when it came time for the first single, um, was that a record company decision or a collaboration between the band and the record label to go with "Give It to Me Good" for the first single? That was like a, a unanimous, that was just like a no-brainer. I mean, never a second guess, never, you know, no question. Once a demo of that song was done, it was like, see you later. Thanks. <laughs> right, like for, from the get, be the first. Angel, you're breaking that, out, buddy. So <laughs> you knew from the beginning that would be the first single. You say that again, you froze up a little. Oh, sorry. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, so you knew from, from the beginning that would be the first single. Yeah. We had Line of Fire as kind of a uh, a warm-up single to service radio, but we knew um, Give It To Be Good was going to be the video, and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Steve, let me ask this. So I, I just seen that you, uh, did you change record labels? Go from uh, Melodic to... Um, yeah, from Melodic Rock Records to High Volume Music. Yeah. Yep. What, what, was, what was the reasoning behind that? Um, well, the Melodic Rock thing was really, it was a licensing deal. It was um, the guy over there, Andrew... He put the record out and, you know, made it available for people to purchase, essentially. That was really about it. Um, uh, it wasn't so much of a label as it was really just kind of a platform to exist. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I hadn't really heard from him in a while. And, um, you know, Bill Chavez over at High Vol Music, is, um, he's been around for a long time i've known him even from afar for a long time but personally for a while and as of as of late he's kind of really upped his game with the label and really he's been focused on taking it to another level and uh, so i sent him the first half of the new record and he loved it and i uh, wanted to be part of it so that's all i needed to hear where are and they it's based? More of a label, you know. Yeah, where are they based out of now? I know a lot of people are with Frontier, and you know, but where's Highball? Yeah. I I get I sent both records to Frontiers. They passed because it it's it's not a Frontiers release, and I knew that going in. But I figured, you know, I got a relationship with them. Let me give them first dibs, even though I know it's a little more. It's too modern, quote unquote, for them. It's not. Doesn't have the blazing solos. Doesn't have fire and women on the cover. Does you know? <laughs> nor was I gonna allow it to. You know, mm -hmm. I gave it. You know, I let them. You know, give their their green light or or pass on it out of respect to them because we have a relationship. But you know, I knew that that's not the kind of record <clears throat> that they're looking for, and I wasn't about to modify it in any way, shape, or form. So um, that's why working with Bill and Haival is great. I think he's, he's out of Maryland. Yeah. yeah. 
It's Him actually based out of Harford County, Maryland, the same county that I'm in. Bill's 15 minutes from me. Oh, oh wow. Look at that. Oh. Very cool. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. Steve. Okay. Your turn, buddy. <laughs> so you have been performing with Eric Martin of Mr. Big. Uh, do you see you guys recording every time soon? Because you record, uh, you play out live, but have you ever thought about putting some things down on paper and actually recording? Yeah, I do. I do. Steve does. We do. And Eric does, too. It's just a matter of fucking doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have a that, especially nowadays. But right. um yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, obviously that's something I, we've been I have sorry, about. guys. I have a follow-up question. Uh how was the story behind, you know, how do you get together with Eric Martin and, you know, started to play together and sing together? Yeah. We've uh we knew Eric for a long time, probably since 91. Um he came out to one of our shows in Sacramento, I think. And um, um, he had heard that we were fans. Pete, in, in specifically, had mentioned Eric and Mr. Big in, in an interview. So Eric was like, hey, I got to check these guys out. These whippersnappers. You know, and, uh, so he came out and uh, we were, you know, friends ever since then. And um, he, he had a, a, a little tour booked about four years ago in Japan that he was going to go over and do some of his poppier stuff that was popular in Japan, his solo material, Mr. Big stuff, but not um, like a, not a lot of the lean into it stuff because Mr. Big had just been over there and wanted it to be a little bit different. So do deeper cuts. And um, so he needed a band. So he called me and Steve and then we got Joey Quesada to play with us. And then the Japanese promoters found out that me and Steve were going to be like, we were just going to go over his kind of hired guns and just play. Then the Japanese promoters were like, oh, you got to do some Trickster. And Eric's been, always been a big fan of ours. So he's like, dude, we got to do some Trickster. We got to do You'd Stick Out from your record. We got to do, he was a big fan of 40 Foot Ringo. He's like, we got to do that Freak Like You, 40 Foot Ringo song, <laughs> which he actually <laughs> stole for one of his records. Um, he's like, so he was always a big fan of ours. And, you know, I mean, I, we were like, wow, that's fucking really cool. And, cool. You know, um, and then we went over to Japan, did a couple of shows, and it was so much fun. And it went over great. So we're like, let's keep it let's keep it going. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Jay, you've been quiet for a while, buddy. No, nah, no worries. Uh one thing that you would uh you had mentioned, PJ, was the uh was the hiatus, you know, that you guys took for a little while. And then you came back really with that monster album, you know, with really good reception and new audio machine. Like how you know you're always going to have like some love, some sentiment, and you're never going to just release some shit music that you don't want to back or support, you know, but so talk a little bit about releasing an album after such a hiatus, but also having it do so well and be such a quality record with a great reception. Um, yeah, it was kind of a bit of a surprise when we put the band back together. There was no talk of new music or anything because, I mean, let's face it too, we were like, Nobody's going to give us a record deal, nor are we going to search for one. We don't have that energy. We do some shows, you know, have some fun. Um, we were all still very busy in other things. And um, it wasn't until about a year or two after we put it together, Frontiers came a knocking. And, you know, jingle, jingle, jingle. Look, what, what do I got here for you? I got a little money for you. Uh, <laughs> but at this point, you know, we had had like two years under our belt of being a band again. And we were at a point where we're like, all right. Why not? Let's try it. And, you know, being that we had, we had been doing this for quite some time at that point, you know, the music and everything came out that much better. And uh, yeah, it, it got, the new audio machine got really great reviews. I remember we were all sitting there going, reading reviews going, it's another good one. <laughs> <laughs> it's another good one. What the <laughs> getting all these good reviews this is new for us We're like everybody's giving us good reviews and then human error came out two years later and it got even better reviews and it's like all right well, i guess we can get used to this <laughs> you know nice. sure when no one's buying no one's buying records anymore we start getting good fucking reviews <laughs> uh, Jesus. don't get don't get me wrong dude i i love trickster and i i love you know trickster and and here i mean they're 
fucking great records and stuff like that. But I got to tell you, man, I got a love affair with Human Era. The way that you guys put that album together, yeah. the way you guys all meshed in the, the writing and the playing of that. I mean, you know, Crash This Party's great and all these great songs. But I got to tell you, like, Midnight in Your Eyes, like, hit me in, like, a real good place, man. I fucking love that song. Oh, that's great, man. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. And we're, we're really, um, again, Human Error. After a new audio machine, we're like, all right, we did our new record. You know, we can, you know, the shows we do, we can, you know, fit one new song and that's it. We know why people are at our shows, okay? So we're like, probably not doing another record, not even talking about it. Then, ding dong, Frontiers, you guys do another record, yeah? Uh, jingle, jingle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they're like, hey, here's here's the offer if you guys want to do it. And we're like, but let's see. Let's see what we got. And, you know, Steve had a bunch of, um, he probably had like four or five demos, like maybe one or two full songs or like two half songs or something that he sent me. And I'm like, this is a good starting point, you know? And, um, we're like, let's go back and let's like dig up something, some like like on the new audio machine. We went back into the archives, pulled out um, physical attraction, and put that on. That was a song that we did before we were signed and everything. We're like, let's do that again. We found "Rock Into the Edge of the Night," and we just kind of redid that. And like, this would be cool. And uh, and then we just it just basically snowballed from there and it really took on its own thing. And we were like, Holy shit, this is like, we were really proud of that. Like nice. surprised and proud, of, you know, how we, we came out with that record. I mean, it really says a lot of stuff and, um, you know, everyone's playing great and it's awesome. Wow. Guys, <laughs> we've been talking for 50 minutes already. <laughs> oh yeah. Crazy time flies, buddy. Angel, do we have, is there anything from the fans out there? I'm pretty sure that some questions or comments. Angel, you I there? Think we lost, I think we lost them. We lost. Wake up, buddy. Okay, if somebody can uh, check the, from the crew, can check the messages, that would be awesome. I, I don't have, I cannot check them now. Uh, Bobby, do you have any, I'm, I'm, again, PJ, you are awesome. You're you're a very sweet guy, and thank you for your time. This is amazing, you know, for oh, us. Oh, yeah. We are fans, basically, from the East Coast of the United States, you know, asking and talking about music, talking about what we love, you know, and, yeah. and this opportunity that you give us, you know, to ask questions, it's amazing. I, 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 we really appreciate it. Oh, man, my pleasure. It's flattering to hear that I can, you know, do this for you and make you happy. Oh, <laughs> this, this is great. No this sweat off my... So PJ, your your solo album, and and again the singles are great. The video is amazing. Uh, I know with us being quarantined, um, how do you keep it fresh with getting it out there without saturating? You know, like making your audience going, "Oh, he's posting again." But you you need to get it out there because you're not touring. And there's a lot of bands that are doing this now. I'm working with a band and trying they're trying to put music out, but trying to do it to keep it fresh and to keep, you know, yourself relative till things open up, you can get out there and go, Hey man, I've got music here. Yeah. Um, well, what I try to do is because again, I'm like, I'm one of those guys who I'm terrible at selling myself. Um, I just don't have it in me to crowd everyone's feed with, you know, buy my record, watch my video, blah, 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 blah. When something comes out, You'll hear it from me a couple of times and then I'll let you rest. Um, I like to, you know, I like to post, if I'm going to post and do it, you know, close together, I like to post something different each time, like, especially in quarantine, you know, I wrote a new song, I performed it, posted it, you know, then, you know, I picked up the bass and I, you know, did a bass cover of, uh, of a song, you know, then I, you know, worked out a guitar solo on something, showed that, then I'm doing you know, quarantine with Jericho and the boys and, you know, keep doing something different, you know, to keep it fresh. So it's not just like, you know, hey, watch this video again. Watch this video again. Did you see this video that I posted 25 million times? <laughs> you know, you know, my record's not done. My new record's not done yet. So I'm not, luckily, you guys are safe from all those posts. Sitting ducks out there. Just got nothing but your phone to look at. 
He's posting it again. Enough. So um, I'm not posting anything from the new record yet. So, uh, but you know, maybe a clip a teaser thing here or there. But just if anything, just keep it different and try to be involved in different things. Give it, you know, post different aspects. You know, whether it's riding bikes with my kids or you know playing bass or you know singing a new song or doing a Kiss cover song or you know promoting a, a video chat with you guys. You know, to keep it fresh. Awesome. You know, that's that's great. Thank you. Awesome. Jay or oh, Steve, I, who, who's first, guys? I, I lost. Uh, let me <laughs> let me jump in right quick, just because I got some fan action here. Cool. Uh, PJ, ever since you uh, we talked about new audio machine and human error, you got a, a lot of chatter on the messages for fans that really love those records. So I want to um, hit you with that. That you know the uh, the new stuff or the newer stuff was re uh, resonating with fans just as much as the old stuff was. Uh, we're actually getting some love from Bill Chavis right now. Yeah, who, yeah. who wants you to uh, talk about, say, you know, when's Accept the Change coming out? Accept the Change, <laughs> yeah. Oh, he must have just tuned in. He didn't hear what we were talking about him before. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but uh, I got uh, from Matt Porter here. He said, um, how did you end up doing uh, Walk, with, uh, Walk with a Stranger from Skid Row? Um, obviously we, you know, skids and us go way back. Um, so that was a song that they used to do before they were signed. And, um, you know, Snake and Rachel wrote it. And when they were going off to do their record, they knew they weren't going to cut it. And they gave it to us. They said, we want you guys to do this song. And we, and we love the song. We always love that song. Um, and then we, we never cut it for the first record. Our producers just didn't want us to do it. We had other songs that we wanted; they, they wanted us to get to, and you know they probably didn't want to share the publishing. <laughs> so, like, let's, let's sneak and Rachel making enough money now. You know, we'll do our own songs. Um, but we always loved the song. We always wanted to do it. So when we went back and did Physical Attraction, we're like, let's do Walk with a Stranger too. Finally, give that let that see the light of day. Guys, we are close awesome. to the 10... I'm sorry, Jay, you were saying something? Oh, sorry, buddy. No, it's all good. No, per perfect. Thanks, PJ, and um, thank you, Matt, for submitting the question. We got Angel back, so I'll let him Ooh, take back... Angel! Yeah, the fan, uh, the fan thing. Fan mail. Fan mail. There he is. Yeah, uh, um, just looking through the fan mail. Uh, you pretty much covered everything. All right. So, guys, <laughs> one, one thing... One thing well, I want to say get, is to get to to get to Bill's question. My new record, Accent the Change, is, is is the title. It will be out. It was supposed to come out. I was shooting for June, but that ain't gonna happen. Um, maybe end of August, maybe end of the summer. Okay. So, nice. Guys, we are close to the 10 p.m. I do hour on the question. East Coast. Yep. Uh, do you ever plan on writing a book? I don't plan on it. I don't. I don't rule it out. Um, it's something I could do. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, sitting down, and probably now is the fucking time to do it, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I don't. I don't know. You know, a lot of people say this when they write books. They're like, "I was afraid to do it because I don't know if I can memorize memorize everything." You know, it's like I got. You know, I I know I can remember songs. Um. So that would be the one thing I'd be, oh, I can't remember this. I can't remember that. I do have a lot of it archived on video, though. Um, so if you saw, like, if you saw the video for the song Human Era, I made that video out of all my home, like, footage. Oh, and, wow. Um, so I can do, like, an hour or two video on just that. But, um, yeah, I don't rule it out. I mean, if somebody's... Uh, Somebody wants to write it and pick my <laughs> I don't think I can organize a book myself, though. Cool. All right, guys. So it's almost 10 p.m. Uh, if somebody has something to say, say it now. <laughs> or forever hold your peace. But uh, okay, I have a last question. Yeah, go for, go for it. Okay. So now we know Gus just came out with a solo album or is coming out with a solo album. 
and Steve does the Tokyo Motor Fist. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let me see. How can I put? Pete has been really the quiet one out of the four of you. Yeah. Are, like, have you decided? Like, has Steve asked you to be like a special guest on the Tokyo Motor Fist album, or were you ever asked by Gus to go on his solo album? Have you heard? both of their albums and what's your thoughts on either one of their albums um <clears throat> no tokyo tokyo motor fist is they got enough personalities on that record already <laughs> you know that's okay. a separate thing you know, me and steve literally do everything fucking together everything it's a freaking frack you know <laughs> some things you know it's good to just you could do that i could do this you know you know because no matter what he'll do tokyo motor fist I'll do my record or Ra or something, and then shh, we come right back together and do something else. So we're always a part of everything. We don't have to be a part of everything we do. Um, so, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I was left out of that. Um, gotcha. And uh, yeah, I heard I heard Gus did a song, and um, I don't know if he's doing a record or what now. I heard he did a, a version of Give It To Me Good. Yep. Um, that's all I know. Okay. Pete's always been the quiet one. Pete's always been the quiet one in the band. Um, you know, uh, he's, uh, I'm sure he's working on something. But he's quiet. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, anybody oh, else? We do have a special, uh, we do have a special shout out. Uh, Shinobu Odani. Shinobu. No, it's, yep, Shinobu. Shinobu, yeah. From Japan. Yep. Right. Wow. You got somebody watching us from Thank Japan. You. Wow, what yeah, time is there? Yeah, that's also awesome. 10 a.m. Maybe it, it is. It is 11 a.m. 11 a.m. in Japan. Wow. So Amazing. it's it's on um, Thursday morning over there. So happy Thursday morning. Yeah. In Japan. Wow. Very cool. I... PJ, very quick. Uh, if uh, somebody or the fans or another musician or anybody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best? Uh, you know, through social media, what's the best way to to reach out to you? I would say, uh, well, I have a PJ Farley Music Facebook page. Um, I have I have my personal PJ Farley Facebook page, but I also have like three or four thousand pending requests. Like the five thousand <laughs> thing is, you know, it's a problem. You know, especially when I'm trying to get a music page off the ground. But Instagram really seems to be the best way. Follow me on in Instagram, at, you know, at PJ Farley. Um, seems to be, you know. You know, let's get me certified tonight, boys. What do you say? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that, seem, that seems to be, you know, Twitter. I'm on Twitter, but it's connected to my Instagram, really. And, you know, seems cool. Just yeah, a, no, no, that's a cool. branch. Fair enough. Fair enough, cool. man. What about your webpage? Uh, it's um, I, I, it's it's your... pjfarley.net. It's oh. under construction now. So once okay. everything is done with the new record, It'll, yeah, I saw a couple of videos there, or, or at least the link to YouTube, right? So yeah, I think it's it or at least one video. Maybe link to my Facebook too. I think. Cool. All right. So I, I don't know, guys. 10 p.m. <laughs> yeah. one, so, more, one more thing for you, PJ. That's just kind of like a funny little thing because I I mentioned this <laughs> to Steve and he uh, he said yeah he had uh, he had seen these, but um I don't know if you remember this, but while ago before human era came out uh when you guys played the m3 festival i was at your meet and greet and i think it was you that came up with a picture of me in a trickster shirt because sherry from rubik's used to always take my picture because i would show up to shows wearing a different trickster shirt and she would always take pictures of them and That's send funny. them to Steve. But I think it was you that came up to me one time and was like, dude, is this you? And you like, <laughs> in front of me. And I was like, how do you have that? Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Oh, PJ, um, just so you know, I'm the one that wears the trickster shirt, by the way. Yeah, he's, he's uh, Angel is the, is the one, man. He's the number one fan. <laughs> Bobby, what, what's going on with you there? Up there at the corner, the other oh, corner. Oh, I'm up here, yeah. No, I, I'm just uh, totally amazed. And like I said, you know, it, it's great. I'm glad you're keeping busy, you and Steve. Uh, we got a good, great mutual friend with Adam Reaver of FU Tone. So, of course. You know, Adam uh, says hello. So, uh, miss you. 
great. Come down to Pennsylvania, you know, have a you know, we'll do a little nosh over at Adams, but keep busy, keep making I I'm really looking forward to the new album and I'm uh glad to hear about the new record label as well, too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Steve I'll come back wanna, on Sorry, go ahead, uh PJ, sorry. I right, said so I'll come back on and talk all about it when it's done. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. Yeah. definitely we want we would like to have you again. Steve, you wanna say thank you? <laughs> Yes, Dad. Thank you. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm the dad here. <laughs> sure. So, first of all, for um, all the Trickster, Ra, all your project fans, including myself, thank you for taking the opportunity to speak to us. Again, I know yes. I've interviewed you in the past, but yeah, thank, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah. No problem. And as, uh, as a big fan, thank you for always kicking ass. Yeah. yeah. Uh, amazing yes. music, I amazing music, amazing music, musician, sorry, PJ Farley, you know, uh, I mean, th this is just, you know, who he is, amazing, you know, like, very friendly guy, easy going, you know, like, he, he, he survived a Metal Summit interview, you know, like, so many different <laughs> questions. Am I going to uh, make those shirts? That? What's that? Do I get a t-shirt that says that? We're going to send you a t-shirt. I survived the Metal Summit. <laughs> uh, and, you know, here, the Monsters of Rock, you know, Jay from um, Maryland, Angel from New Jersey, Steve from New Jersey, Bobby from uh, Pennsylvania, you know, I'm from Washington, D.C. I'm from Argentina, but I live in Washington, D.C. You know, I want to thank everybody who watched and joined us tonight, you know, here on Facebook Live. Again, you know, an amazing musician, you know, and next Wednesday, 9 p.m. East Coast, you know, uh, we wait for everybody to join us with an, another, you know, interview. So, All right. Thank you, PJ, everybody. Thanks, Thank you, PJ. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Take care. Good night. See you soon. Yeah. All right, bye. Thank you, fans. This time we'll slow it down if we can. Just take my heart when you go. I gotta sleep in your bed. Summit, your source for all things rock and roll.